new versions of FFmpeg and Visual Studio Code, OpenAI's GPT-4 Turbo and Vision models are now in the API, and a pick of the week that's worth leaving the vault for. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. So no special shirt this week, but I do have a bandana that we will be talking more about later. All right, let's get into the news. So the first thing that I want to call out is a blog post from the GitHub blog by Holger that discusses how GitHub engineers uh, use GitHub Copilot. And this is actually one of the questions that I'm asked about most frequently, like how we use GitHub Copilot internally. And I'm thrilled that I can now point to Holger's post. And I particularly love his remarks about semi-automating repetitive tasks, because this is something that I love doing too with GitHub Copilot. And the blog post also includes a demo from one of our engineers who used Copilot to figure out a task in an unfamiliar programming language. And he documented the whole thing. John, the engineer who did that, thank you so much for capturing all of that. And so I've got a full length to the blog post in the links and the description down below. And speaking of GitHub Copilot, there is a new experience in Visual Studio. It's now in Preview 3. The big thing is that this is going to unify the Copilot and Copilot chat experiences into one place. There's some other changes too, and you can see a preview of it in action at the link in the show notes in the description. And you can try it out in, um, as I said, preview uh, three of Visual Studio 17.10. And like I said, that's gonna be out in May. Speaking of Visual Studio, the latest Visual Studio Code update is out now. And this release brings some notable updates to how extension updates happen. So you can now restart and update extensions without having to reload your editor, which is great. There's also now um, folding markers in the minimap. So if you're a monster who keeps the minimap on, I'm kidding, that kind of. Um, that's great. And so I've got a full link to the release notes in the show notes of the description. And speaking of new releases, FFmpeg, which is one of the most useful projects for streaming, recording, and converting audio and video, it's great. Uh, seriously, this thing like underpins so many workflows and so many applications. It just released uh, version 7.0. And last year, the FFmpeg uh, team announced that they were moving to releasing major releases each year and that deprecated APIs will be removed after three releases. So if you're using a feature that was deprecated before FFmpeg 6, be sure that you found a replacement or you know maybe stick with them, the 5.1 LTS branch for now. Some of the big features in this release included uh, support for the native VBC decoder, IAMF support, and a multi-threaded FFmpeg CLI tool, which is great. Um, this is a hugely important project and I'm a huge fan and supporter of. So I've got links in the description um, down below to learn more. In some quick AI news, OpenAI announced that uh, its GPT-4 Turbo and Vision models are now generally available in the API and um, that uh, it can use JSON mode uh, and function calling. And OpenAI highlighted some examples of some tools using this feature now, but I wanna shout out one right now in my project spotlight section. And this is where I highlight great projects on GitHub. And this one comes from Simon Willison, who is the creator of Dataset, a great tool for exploring and publishing data. Uh, and he's also an all around friend of the show. And um, this tool is called uh, Dataset Extract, and it's a plugin for Dataset. And it can extract data from unstructured text and images and then load them into a database. Super, super cool, as is the rest of data set. Uh, and I've got links to Simon's blog post and GitHub repos in the show notes and the description. And now it's time for my pick of the week. A new TV series based on the Fallout video game franchise, hence my bandana, was released on Amazon this week. And I was really nervous because video game TV adaptations are often terrible. And part of the reason The Last of Us is such a triumph is because a, it's amazing storytelling, um, but also, you know, it captured the narrative of that game so well. So when the Fallout series was announced, I was nervous, even though it's being produced by the creators of Westworld. But I'm happy to report that it is great. And even if you've never played the games, I think that you'll enjoy the show. But for fans of the games, like myself, the show got the tone just exactly right, and it's so, so good. So if you haven't played the games, or if you haven't played them in a while, Bethesda announced this week that Fallout 4, a game that was released way back in 2015, 
wow, um, is getting some upgrades. And so for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S owners, they'll now be able to play in up to 60 frames a second at increased resolutions. Um, the Steam Deck owners, the game's now going to be Steam Deck verified. And there have been improvements for the PC releases for widescreen and ultra widescreen support, as well as some other updates. I recently played through Fallout 4 again on my Steam Deck, and it was such a good time. Uh, these updates are going to be out uh, and they'll be free on April 25th. So that's awesome. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. Let me know your favorite video game adaptation in the comments or, you know, let me know your thoughts on any other story that we covered. We appreciate that. If you like this episode, give us a like. It helps the algorithm out and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all of your nerd needs. See you next time.